What is happening, people? UFC Vegas 90, Brendan Allen versus Chris Curtis 2. Let's have a look at the card. Let's do a little breakdown of these fights and let's make our picks based on today's betting odds. Let's go. So starting off the night, we have Melissa Tonya Mullins versus Nora Canoli. 6-0 oh, and 0 oh for Mullins, 7-1 and 0 oh for Canoli. Minus 340 for Mullins and plus 250 for Nora Canoli. 32 years old and 34 years old. Mullins fought for Aries before joining the UFC with her most recent win in there against Daria Zelenkova, who fought two weekends ago and won her unanimous decision against Rendon. She had a UFC debut against Irina Aleskiva, who personally I thought was going to go and win that fight. She got dropped in the first round, managed to control the fight well on the floor, and also landed some good strikes of her own in the second round. A grappling ability is where I think she will have the advantage in this one. Canoli made a UFC debut in Paris last year against Jocelyn Edwards where she managed to outstrike her slightly to take a unanimous decision. If you go back and watch that fight I'm not sure that there was much of a unanimous decision about it as it was a closer fight than you might think. The French crowd cheering every time she landed on a strike being the home fighter probably gave her the edge in that fight with the judges listening to every single time the French fans went woo! But to be honest she didn't look great on the floor at all. She didn't have much power in her shots. But to be fair, she is active in the clinch. I see the favourite taking this fight. Comparing the Kanoli debut fight to where she struggled on the ground, I see this fight going the same way. Versus a much more experienced grappler in Mullins, who should work her way towards a unanimous decision in this one and potentially even get a finish. Next up, we have Dylan Budka versus Cesar Almeida. 7-2 and 0 for Budka and 4-0 and 0 for Almeida. Minus 150 on the bet in favour for Budka and a plus 125 for Almeida. 24 and 36 years old. Budka coming into the UFC via unanimous decision went on the Dana White Contender Series that wasn't that spectacular, to be honest. His wrestling was solid and he had great takedown defense. Other than that, he never really showcased much and done what he had to do to get the finish and secure that contract. Most of his wins in his career have been by decision and he has two submissions and one KO. Almeida with a win back in 2013 over Alex Pereira. He had three fights against him in kickboxing. The man has got some striking ability and he has finished a handful of fights in his career. He is also joining the the UFC via the Dana White Contender Series winning a unanimous decision over Lucas Fernando. Fernando was able to take him down quite easily in the first round, but Almeida done well in the grappling exchanges to get back to his feet. Managed to reverse the positions as well as landing some decent elbows when he got back on top and even attempted some submissions. Almeida has definitely got some heavier hands in this fight and as I mentioned had better grappling than I expected him to have. The problem here is Dudka's relentless takedown attempts and his solid wrestling ability. Will Almeida be able to stave off Dudka's takedown and the quench work to be able to get the shot off and see where it goes on the ground and we'll be able to reverse the position and get back to his feet. I'm going to take a risk and back the big old dog in this one. He's strong, he's had some good grappling defense and he will definitely land more shots in this fight as the output is higher. Dudker is slow and very wrestling focused and doesn't seem to be very active when he's in the clinch or on the ground. Next up we have Gene Matsumoto versus Dan Argueta. 14-0-0 for Matsumoto and 9-1-0 for Argueta. Minus 170 favorite coming in for Gene Mats Matsumoto and a plus 140 underdog for Dan Argueta. 24 years old and 30 years old. Matsumoto joined the UFC via unanimous decision victory over Casey Tanner, where he looked great throughout the fight. His leg kicks were unbelievable from the get-go. His striking was fast and snappy. The pace and the output was excellent throughout the fight, and his combinations were smooth. At only 24 years old, this dude has amassed a 14-fight win streak in his professional career so far across multiple promotions, and I can't wait to see what he does in his debut come Saturday night. Argueta's coming off two no-contest fights, which is something you don't see very often. One to Ronnie Lawrence due to a premature stoppage and the other one to Miles Johns where the decision went to Johns but was later overturned due to testing positive for elevated levels of Tyrannobol. Before that he lost his debut fight against Damon Jackson and he went on to win a unanimous decision over Nick Aguirre. He's got a very strange style when he's standing in front of you. He's got some weird head movements, move weird foot movements. He favours his grappling and tries to push the fight towards the quench or dives in for the takedown as we've seen continuously in his fights. He's strong and he's got four submission wins so far in his career. Matsumoto has the striking advantage here and has some speed to match it. Argueta has a chin though as we've seen him taking some heavy digs from Miles Johns in their fight. I'm going to back Matsumoto to in this one to get it finished. The first round is going to be tough for him with the relentless attempts of takedowns from Argueta but I think if he can get through there then he can manage to take the fight wherever he wants. Matsumoto scrambles really well. He has enough jiu-jitsu experience to be able to survive and get it back to his feet and that's where I see him getting the better of Argueta in this fight. On to the next one we have Cynthia Calvillo versus Pierre. Pierre? 
Vieira, Pap, fucking whatever. Rodriguez, 9, 6, and 1, 9, 1, and 0. Oh. Plus 100 underdog for Cavillo and a minus 125 favorite for Rodriguez, 36 and 31 years old. Cavillo currently on a five fight losing streak and it's not looking too good for her. Previously removed from the UFC and then has came back again. She beat Jessica Wright and then lost against Seminara, Andrade, Andrea Lee, Nina Nunes, and Lupe Godinez. She needs to win this fight or she will be getting cut from the promotion once again. When you look at the stats of the last two fights, you could argue that she had won both of these fights, but that's not how the cocky crumbled. Rodriguez lost the last fight against Jillian Robertson via an armbar, but before that, she joined the UFC through Dana White's Contender Series, and she had wins over Kay Hansen and Sam Hughes. Taking the decision win over Sam Hughes isn't the easiest feat, and losing via an armbar against Jillian Robertson isn't anything you should be ashamed of either, to be honest. Even though when you look at Cavillo's losses, being against some of the bigger names in the division, I just don't think she's going to be able to get the edge and get the unanimous decision in this one. I'm going to be back in the favourite on Rodriguez to take this one by unanimous decision. The next fight is a late addition to this card. We have Pedro Falcao versus Victor Hugo. 16-3-0 for Falcao. 24-4-0 for Hugo. There's been no odds yet on any of the apps that I use that I can't see. As I always say at the start of this video, I use Bet365 and that's what I base my odds off. They haven't got shit sitting on there yet. Both of these men coming here at 31 years old. Falcao stepping in on a short notice replacement. The man has six wins by KO and five submission victories. He's won 10 of his last 11 fights with five of them in a row and he's set to make his UFC debut. He did win his Dana White Contender Series via a ground and pound in the third round in 2021 and I'm not sure why but it's taken him three years to get into the UFC. Hugo's currently on a 13 fight win streak joining the promotion through Dana White Contender Series where he won a via a knee bar in the second round. He boasts eight knockouts in his career as well as nine submission finishes and seven decisions so he has a lot of experience coming into this fight. Now I ain't gonna sit here and pretend that I know a lot about these guys going into this fight because I don't you know what I mean I've gone back and I've looked at some tapes but that's all I can really do. Looking over their records it looks like it's gonna shape up to be a good fight. I'm gonna be backing Hugo in this one. He has a little bit extra more experience in the cage and he has been a lot more active in the recent years than Falcao has but who knows short notice fighter might be able to come in and take it. Next up we have Norman Dumont versus Jermaine Deradamy. 10, 2, and 0 oh for Dumont and 10, 4, and 0 oh for Jermaine Deradame. Minus 150 on the betting favourite for Norma Dumont and plus 125 on Jermaine. I'm just going to say Jermaine from here on out. It's easier. 33 years old and 39 years old. Dumont coming in on a free fight win streak with a most recent victory against Chandler, who once we have always spoken about got turned into a meme after that fight. 33 years old, winning most of her fights by decision with two submission victories mixed in there as well. Dumont will be looking at keeping her winning streak going on this one. Jermaine Deradame holds holds more experience in the octagon and won her last fight against Joanna Pena. Before that, lost the title opportunity against Amanda Nunes back in 2019. We haven't seen a fight since 2020 though, and at 39 and the lack of activity doesn't fill me with much confidence of her going into this one and getting it done. I'm going to be back in Dumont to take this by decision. She should be able to outstrike Jermaine randomly, and again, the lack of activity at the end of the MMA career just doesn't fill me with much confidence at all, so I'm back in Norma Dumont to take this one by decision. To headline the prelims, we have Court McGee versus Alex Morono. Court McGee, 21 12 and 0. Alex Morono, 23, 9 and 0. Plus 250 on the underdog for McGee and a minus 334 for Alex Morono. 39 years old, 33 years old. McGee's had a very long career in MMA, turning pro back in 2007. Joined the UFC via the Ultimate Fighter Season 11 back in 2010 and he's came up against a who's who in the division over the years. He's had a win one, lose one, win one, lose one kind of career, but he's been finished in the first round in his last two fights against Jeremiah Wells and Matt Brown. McGee is a veteran of the sport at this point. He always turns up to fight, but you got to be thinking it's almost time for him to hang up the gloves at 39 years old. Morono joined the promotion back in 2016. Another guy cementing himself as a veteran of the sport and facing the who's who of the Division 2. Lost his last fight to unanimous decision against Joaquin Buckley back in October last year, and he'll be looking at getting back into the winning column. He has six finishes, seven submissions, and nine decision victories in his career so far, fighting out of Gracie Barra Jiu-Jitsu. He's known as a kickboxer, but when it comes down to the ground, he's got all the skills and capabilities to get the fight finished. Personally, I think this is a great Great matchup. Court McGee is no man to walk past. A game opponent in every fight that he enters, but you've got to be a little cautious of that chin, and especially at the age, given how his last two fights have ended. I'll be back in Morono to get this one done, either by finish or decision. Kicking off the main card, we've got Trevor Peak versus Charlie Campbell. 9 1 0 for Peak, 8 2 0 for Campbell. Plus 150 underdog and Trevor Peak and a minus 175 favorite for Charlie Campbell. 29 years old and 28 years old. Peak came into the UFC via Dana White contender series with a win over Malik Lewis 
by a ground and pound in the second round. Pete went on to win his debut in the first round against Eric Gonzalez, then lost a tough fight against Chepi Mariscal. He came back with a unanimous decision over Mohamed Yaya, and he's looking at keeping this win going. He's not the biggest of lightweights, but he's got some power in his hands, and if he catches you, you're going to definitely know about it. And he always turns up to fight. He's an all or nothing kind of dude. Campbell had his shot in the Dana White Contender Series against Chris Duncan, where it looked like he was going to be getting the better of Chris and had him on the ropes. But up until that point, but somehow Chris managed to turn it around, cracked him straight down the pipe and got that finish over Charlie Campbell. He won a fight in the regional scene, then was called up to face Alex Reyes in September last year, where he finished Reyes with a left hook and a straight right in the first round. Campbell carries a lot of power in his hands with the six finishes in his career so far, which makes this matchup even more interesting given how both these fighters like to scrap. We've got two dudes that love to stand and bang. Pete takes the fight to his opponent and it is a bit wild at times. Campbell can be the same, but since he's been caught by Chris Duncan, he seems to be a little bit more composed when he's in there. I'm going to be backing Campbell to get this one done. Like I said, both fighters are very, very game. Both fighters will strike the life out of each other and both fighters have the power to shut the lights out. But Campbell definitely has a higher output and he is looking a little more calculated these days since his Dana White contender series fight. Up next, we have Lucas Bresky versus Valtov Walker. 8-4-1 for Bresky and 11-0-0 for Walker. Plus 225 underdog for Bresky and a minus 275 favorite for Walker. 31 years old and 26 years old. Bresky joined the UFC via the Dana White contender series back in 2021 with a decision overturned to a no contest. Since joining the promotion, he is yet to win a fight, losing all three of his bouts so far, two by decision and one being finished by Waldo Cortez Acosta in the first round. Not looking good for Bresky and if he doesn't pull something out of the bag in this one, he's definitely going to be getting cut from the UFC. Walker's currently on an 11 fight win streak on the regional MMA scene but when you look a little deeper into his opponents that he's faced, it's been a few cans. His last couple of fights were against a 40 year old dude with a lot of losses on his record and another guy that's not had much success across any scene whether it be kickboxing or bare knuckle boxing. Other than being related to Johnny Walker I'm not too sure what he's doing in the UFC. This seems like it'd be a favourable matchup for Bresky but in saying that I just don't rate him that much either. Even though Walker has faced a few cans I still reckon he's going to be able to come in here and find a way to get it done. He does have some finishes in his career and it's a heavyweight fight so these dudes are always packing power. Up next we got Inacio Bahamondes versus Christos Giagos. 14-5-0 Bahamondes and 20-11-0 for Giagos. Minus 334 betting favourite for Bahamondes and plus 250 underdog on Giagos. 26 years old and 34 years old. Bahamondes coming off his recent loss to Ludovic Quine via an unanimous decision. He's going to be looking at getting back in there. Since joining the UFC through Dana White's contender series in 2020, he's lost his debut then went on to win three fights in a row with wins over Roosevelt, Robert, Rongzu and Trey Ogden. Bahal Mondes is a solid fighter and even though he fell short against Quine, that's not exactly the worst opponent to lose to, to be honest. Giagos lost his last fight against Daniel Zaluba via an anaconda choke in round two. Giagos has been in the UFC since 2018 and has had some fights against some decent names like Drakkar Close, Thiago Moises and Arman Saryukian. He has a solid number of finishes in his career so far, but he also has a lot of losses to go along with that. I'll be taking Bahal Mendes in this one to get it done. Back into his winning ways after this one. And at 26 years old, it's looking like the UFC are trying to set him back up onto that path and I can see him getting the finish over Giagos in this one. Up next, we've got Morgan Charrier versus Shepe Mariscal. 19-9-1 for Charrier and 15-6-0 for Mariscal. Minus 125 favourite coming in for Charrier and a plus 170 underdog on Mariscal. That's pretty funky. 28 years old and 31 years old. Charrier, former Cage Warriors champion, made his debut last September in Paris when he absolutely kicked the hell out of his opponent, Manolo Zecchini. He looked incredible in his debut. He was fast. He pushed forward. The kicks, as mentioned, were on unbelievable. He has 11 wins by finish, 3 wins by submission, 5 by decision but it's worth noting that he has lost 8 decision fights over his career too. Mariscal currently on a 5 fight winning streak, made his debut last year versus Trevor Peak. He fought on multiple regional promotions like Cage Warriors, LFA, Combati Global and CFFC. He's very well rounded, he's solid and when he gets going he's an absolute animal. With Charrier debut going the way that it did, I can see why people are probably leaning towards him and why he's the favourite but I'm going to go with Mariscal to get this one done by decision. As a mentioned is very well rounded and I think he's going to be able to make it difficult for Charrier over the course of three rounds and he has got that dog in him to pull through on this. Here we go people the co-main event of the evening Alexander Hernandez versus Damon Jackson 14-7-0 for Alexander Hernandez 22-6-1 for Damon Jackson minus 200 favourite for Hernandez and a plus 170 on Jackson 31 years old and 35 years old. Hernandez coming off his loss to Bill Algio and he's had a bit of a hit and a miss kind of career in the UFC so far he lost to Billy Q Renato Moicano to Thiago Moises, Drew Dober. He did beat Jim Miller and Mike Breeden though. He's got a striking advantage in this fight and he does have a few finishes within his career. Jackson lost his last two fights against Billy Q and Dan
Dan Ige. But before that, he was on a four-fight win streak. His grappling skills are definitely an advantage in this fight with 15 wins via submission across his career. And he does have some striking ability. Usually uses it to set up his takedowns. And that's where he wants to take this one. And his best chances are with the grappling exchange. And saying all that, I'm going to be backing Hernandez to get this one done. He has a higher output in the striking department, some solid takedown defense, and his output improves as the fight goes on from round to round. Even if Jackson does manage to take him down, it won't be long before he gets back to his feet and he takes a decision victory. Main event of the evening, Brendan Allen versus Chris Curtis. 23, 5 and 0 for Allen, 31, 10 and 0 for Curtis. Minus 200 betting favorite for a Brendan Allen and a plus 170 underdog on Chris Curtis. 28 years old and 36 years old. This fight was meant to be against Marvin Vittori, but he had to withdraw. Since their last fight, Brendan has gone on a six fight winning streak with his recent victories over Andre Munez, Bruno Silva and Paul Craig. He absolutely dominated Paul Craig in November last year when he was caught in a nasty looking submission. He worked his way through it to get a rear naked choke against Paul. In his last six fights, he's finished five of them via a rear naked choke. Saying that, he's definitely improved in his striking since he last fought Chris, but obviously he still favours the grappling aspects of MMA and always tries to take the fight to the ground. Chris Curtis coming off a split decision victory over Barrio at the start of this year. Stepping in a short notice, but not that short as he has had a few weeks to train for this fight. Curtis has came across some veterans in the game like Jack Hermanson and Kelvin Gastelum. Granted, he lost to both of those guys in those fights, but as I've said before, there's no shame into losing to guys at that level. Chris has a striking advantage and he isn't the easiest guy to get down to the ground and it's going to be interesting to see if Brendan Allen would be able to get a rear naked choke finish in this matchup. Considering everything from when they last fought, who they came up against, how their fights have gone and what the results have been looking at, I'm still going to be backing Chris Curtis to get this one done. As I mentioned, I don't think it's going to be an easy or a simple for Allen to take him down to the ground and get that rear naked choke that he loves to land. Chris will have the higher output on the feet. As the fight progresses, I can see him landing big shots and wearing Allen down a little bit and a little bit more. Brendan Allen hasn't thrown more than 100 strikes in any of his recent fights. And in some of these, it's less than 70. Curtis has the power in his hands to get the finish. And as we've seen him finish Allen before and Joaquin Buckley back in 2022, it could be a potential outcome of this fight. So yeah, I'm going to be going against the general consensus here and I'm going to be backing Chris Curtis as a decision victory in this one. So that's been my picks for UFC Vegas 90, Brendan Allen versus Curtis Blades 2. Let me know in the comments what you're thinking as well. If you've got any of those different, then let's have a little look at them. There is a few underdogs in there where I picked against them as favorites, but you could definitely add them onto some parlays if you wanted to. Some of the ones that I would consider as the underdogs that you could potentially pick would be a Lucas Bresky, it would be a Trevor Peak, or it would be a Dan Argueta. These are the people that I think I've obviously backed against them, but... If I was picking some underdog picks and I wanted to bang it on there, there is some decent odds to be going on to those. So I hope everybody has a great weekend. Good luck with your picks. Good luck with your bets. And up until the next one, people, I'll catch you next time. Peace. What's going on, people? Arnold Allen here. Make sure you subscribe to the Rambling Dad podcast. Keep up to date with all his MMA content, fight breakdowns, interviews and all that stuff. Give him a follow. Give him a subscription. And uh, yeah, get over there.